So the story is we were uh, using a metric system called Graphite. Nobody was actually instrumenting the code and it wasn't really being used. Um, and like the dashboarding tools for, for Graphite were really bad. Um, but we were using something called Kibana. Kibana, that was nice looking. People liked using that, but it didn't have the metrics. So before Christmas holidays, Torquil was kind of looking at Kibana's code and application. Maybe I can get metrics in here. And then uh, after the Christmas holiday, he came back with a new piece of software. He called it Grafana. In January 2014, I think, uh, Torco came in and he said, I have this. And uh, he did it like a the, sort of Torkel way where he does a, a demonstration and he's really passionate about it. It was just an instant hit. A few weeks later, our um, CTO, he brought in TVs so we could bring it uh, to have like big screens with Grafana dashboards. So it came from like nothing to all over the workplace instantly. The idea of democratizing metrics, it was a cultural revolution. So he got some open source feedback in reverse building a community, started people, people started using it. And he figured he wants to give this a try. Just the idea that you could, um, you know, kind of WYSIWYG, right, build a dashboard for Graphite was, was pretty, was pretty uh, revolutionary at the time, right? It was pretty profound, like that nothing like that existed. The first time that I really got it, that, okay, how, how big this could be, was at Monterama in Portland in 2016. And then like, I looked around and I was like, there was a queue of people like standing behind me waiting to talk to Torco. But that, that was like when you say, wow, yeah, like, like people are, are really enthusiastic and, and, and passionate about it. Grafana is popular and people were giving us high fives and everyone was uh, loving the product. And that was just something I've never seen before. I fell in love with it when I could see the data that I produce at my home and seeing the dashboard with like all of the visualizations and I could interact with the data and I could like learn more about my surroundings. And there was a company that put shipping containers on the roads in Paris and inside those containers they grew strawberries. And like the whole hydroponic system and the HVAC and everything was all monitored and visualized using Grafana. Unnamed rocket launching companies, you know, you can see in their live streams, you can see Grafana dashboards. You know, I'm a huge Formula One fan and you can see on the pit wall in some Formula One races, Grafana dashboards. Seeing that pop up in so many places, it's just so exciting. From the day one, I understood that community is very important to like everyone in Grafana, helping our users on community forums and talking to them. We are helping to investigate bugs, create new features, and uh, looking at their dashboards at Twitter because a lot of people like to like share like what they've built. We still get lots of um, external contributions, lots of drive-by contributions, and that's brilliant. Like we love to see people engaging with the project in that way. MySQL and Postgres data sources uh, were all contributed by people in the community. Uh, the Prometheus plugin uh, was, was also a PR. So that was really important, sort of keeping up and following the next wave. It's a big tent, right? We're trying to, we're trying to do this for everyone. And yeah, but it's, that's also what got us here. Torkoal made that decision very early on that uh, I'm, I'm going to actually support multiple databases. People at the time they thought it was a really weird decision. Like, why, why would you support multiple databases and yeah, it has all these problems? Um, but that, that was the start of the big tent. It's been central to our, our success. We've gone from being a very metrics-oriented solution to really kind of big tent now includes like, um, you know, other forms of telemetry. I'm super proud of what we've been. I, I, I just gotta say that it's nowhere close to where I thought we would be going. I think I said during some meeting internally that there's never gonna be a need for more than 30,000 Grafana instances in the world. And <laughs> I've been proven quite wrong. We can't really see all the potential, but we can still be the UI for so many different ways of uh, storing data and reacting to data and integrating data. Super, super happy about that. Hello everyone, good afternoon, and welcome to Graphonicon 2023. 
It's great to be here. We're back in Stockholm, where it all started, joined by tens of thousands of uh, virtual attendees streaming from all corners of the world. So a warm welcome from all of us. And you know, when I first visited Stockholm for the first time back in 2014 to meet up with Torkel, do some early planning, hire the, handful of, the first handful of developers almost 10 years ago, um, I didn't get a good impression of Stockholm, to be honest. It was dark, it was cold, <laughs> it was depressing. Similar words would be used by potential investors at the time to describe our business model that year. <laughs> but, um, you know, I've become a huge fan, and Stockholm in the summer is amazing. So who's glad to be here? Make some noise. Yeah? yeah. We're certainly really happy to be here. Um, you know, this year's Graphonicon is a really special one for us. You know, not only is it the first time that we're back in person at a Graphonicon since 2019, um, but we're here to reflect on 10 years of Grafana. And I just can't believe, earnestly, I have a really hard time believing that it's been 10 years. And, you know, we're always excited at Graphonicon because every year we release a new major version of Grafana. This year is no different. We're releasing Grafana 10 today. We're really excited to tell you more about that. Um, but the other big emotion that we have is nostalgia, right? It's hard to believe that it's been almost a decade since Torkel first launched Grafana, growing from a small man with a big dream <laughs> 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 to becoming the most popular data visualization software in the world, used by millions of people. You know, and when we uh, when we first started Grafana, right, we had a very simple, uh, you know, uh, vision, right. We wanted to to build an open source tool that made it easy for anyone to go and build, uh, you know, visualizations and, and monitor their data, right. And we never could have imagined, right, the impact that uh, Grafana would have, right. And so Grafana has been a it's a community driven project, right. It's the it's the feedback and the the, uh, the the contributions from our users that have really helped make you know Grafana what it is today, right. And we have, uh, you know, here in the the live audience we have today, many of the uh, kind of key contributors, right, that we've had the pleasure of working with um, over the, the many years, um, right, that kind of help drive the Grafana project forward, help make sure that it, uh, you know, keeps meeting the, the growing and, uh, and changing needs of all of our users. And, I've, you know, I'm just so proud of, of what we have accomplished, right, and by we, I don't mean the, the three of us, right, because the success of Grafana has really been driven by, you know, the efforts of everyone who's, you know, joined us on our mission, right, not just the Grafana Labs team, um, you know, but the, uh, the wider community, right, you've been our teachers, uh, our testers our troubleshooters, uh, and of course our uh, um, spell checkers. Um, you know, but I'm really excited about the future, right? We're really just kind of getting started with Grafana. Um, we have really big plans, uh, you know, to make Grafana even more powerful, to make it uh, more flexible and easy to use. And uh, so who better to kind of talk us through uh, all of this than, uh, you know, the creator of Grafana, you know, our chief Grafana officer, um, our sometimes benevolent but always friendly uh, community dictator, uh, Talk a load of God. <laughs> Take it away. Well, Jordan. thanks, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> so, as Anthony and Raj said, it's been 10 years. So, in December 2013, I started working on Grafana. It's hard to, hard to think that's been th this long, but um, we'll celebrate not only. Uh, we'll, not, we'll not celebrate this with Grafana 10 release, but also take a look back at these 10 years and see how this project got started, sort of how it came about, the big milestones and forks in the road that got us to where we are today. So let's start with how it all got started. And for me, it started with falling in love with graphs and, be, and the ability to visualize production systems that were mostly black boxes up until then. And this love started with two great open source projects, Graphite and Kibana. So Graphite, for those who don't know, was the king of time series databases in the time before Prometheus. It had a pretty rich, amazing query language to, to enable you to query and analyze metrics and graph them. It was super easy to instrument your application with libraries like StatsD and other metrics framework. And it was a little bit harder to, to actually build and, and graph them, but it was very powerful and very visual. And I just fell in love with being able to see the applications and services come to life in real time. 
being able to visualize applications, service behaviors, and performance behaviors, and user and business metrics, and see how those were impacted in real time as changes were being deployed and rolled out. It was just really exciting and transformative to, to deploy a change and see the in-production user impact of that change. But Graphite had a big problem, and that was usability. Uh, the graphs were not interactive, they were just PNG images, and you could not kind of mark a region or hover over data points. Uh, and actually building the dashboards and editing the queries and building the graphs was very cumbersome and very hard and complex. So many of the people on my teams didn't build dashboards, they didn't instrument their applications, because it was just too hard, it took too long, it was too much to learn. But at the same time, we actually started using Kibana, Kibana was a new open source tool to build dashboards and visualize logs stored in Elasticsearch. It also started its life in 2013. And Kibana, I think, really changed the game for centralized log visualization and dashboarding also. It had a pretty great UI to build dashboards and had very fast interactive graphs. So I had an idea. What if Kibana could query Graphite and visualize time series metrics? But Kimana was squarely focused on Elasticsearch, Elasticsearch as its single data source and did not want to support other data sources. So I figured it's open source, I can just fork it and turn it into something that was squarely focused on metrics and time series. So on the 5th of December 2013, I started ripping Kimana apart, removing things I think I thought I didn't, would, would need, and trying to turn its graph panel into something that could visualize data coming from a graphite query. And this was really quickly accomplished, so only two days later, I started looking at how I could improve the user experience. At the time, all the panel editing you, uh, in Kibana was done through modals, and you can really see the, the graph you were changing settings for. So I started working on a full screen edit view. Uh, and the purpose here was really to make it possible to, to edit the query, edit the graph options, and see the graph all in one view, and really see the impact of changes as you were making them. With the new edit mode done, I started to address another challenge. And that was to make querying easier. This was probably the biggest roadblock that I struggled with, and many on my team also struggled with. Because it was really hard to edit and create and really understand the graphite queries because they were really long nested expressions and you had a, only a small text box to edit them. And all the parameters to the functions were on the far right and all the function names on the far left. And you could rarely see both at the same time. And editing these long, usually much longer than this, editing these expressions in this small text box was not going to be good enough if I wanted Grafana to be easy to use for everyone. So by turning these nested expressions into a sequence of operations, I thought it became a lot more easier to reason about. And more importantly, I could build a UI for it. And this is what became the Graphite Query Editor, one of the, I think, be better editors even today. Uh, I think it kind of balancing, balances amazing ease of use and power in a very small space making queries both easier to read and edit at the same time. And as an aside, in Grafana 9 last year, Prometheus and Loki got query editors expired by, inspired by pretty much the same concept, enabling anyone to build and edit queries. There was one more key thing that was added before the first release of Grafana, and that was support for template variables to make dashboards more generic and reusable. A key feature that many dashboard tools at the time were missing. Dashboard var template variables became a really key standout feature for Grafana, one that I think is starting to become ubiquitous in most dashboarding tools today. You're hard pressed to find a dashboard without a template variable or two. And sadly, sometimes I think a few too many. So in January 2014, Grafana was released for the first time, version one. There was already a number of alternative graphite dashboards at the time, so I didn't really think that much was going to happen by releasing this. Maybe a few would find it interesting, but I was wrong. It's 
clean and good-looking UI, fast and feature-rich graphing, and easy editing, and the template variable support to make dashboards more reusable made it a hit from day one. And the reaction from the monitoring community was just incredible. With so much love and positive feedback that took me by surprise and made it super easy to kind of quit my job and start working on Grafana full time. And this community response and love for the product and project has made it such a joy to work on Grafana throughout the years. So after this initial reaction, I realized I needed a logo because this was going to be a real project and not just a one-off thing. And most of the projects at the time had some animal or creature in their logos. It's like, think the gopher in, in, in the GoLine project or log in the Logstash project. So after some mucking around in Adobe Illustrator, the only time I've ever used that, I'm not a graphic designer of any kind, uh, I um, came up with this uh, weird looking spiked dinosaur creature that became the, the Grafana logo. A logo that we simplified a few years later, maybe in an attempt to be more prof look more professional, I don't know. Um, but uh, if you miss him, we have a new creature or mascot, if you will. We call him Grot. Uh, he started his life as a GitHub automation bot, but uh, he has received a promotion, and you can now see him in, in a few instances in Grafana 10 even, and he has his own award, as you will see later today. So Grafana is now out and released in the world. Let's look at some big milestone that will take us to where we are today. And the first milestone that I want to talk about happened really early in the life of Grafana. Already two months after the first release, Grafana took the step to become a multi-data source UI with the additional support for InfluxDB. This decision to make Grafana a multi-data source UI is really key, and it's really key because it became such a differentiator for Grafana. And it made it possible for Grafana to be used in a really wide range of use cases and tap into fast and growing ecosystems like that of Prometheus. Later on, we added support for SQL data sources and Elasticsearch and expanded Grafana's visualization capabilities beyond graphs and tables. But the most important thing we did in those early years was creating a plugin system and a plugin catalog, making it possible for anyone to extend Grafana with new visualizations, new data sources, and new applications. This was a really key moment as it turned Grafana into a platform and set the stage for Grafana Lab's Big Ten policy or Big Ten strategy that doesn't see competitors as something to keep out but as partners to integrate with. This strategy and this plugin system enabled in our countless supported data sources, visualizations, and applications, making Grafana a really unique platform and a true single pane of glass solution. So next milestone, I think, is when we introduced alerting in Grafana version 4. By introducing alerting, Grafana became more than just a visualization tool. With alerting, Grafana took the step closer to becoming more of an observability platform, an observability solution. A solution that does not just visualize data, but can actively monitor data and notify users. The next milestone, version 5. Uh, this is a release I really remember fondly. It was announced at GrafanaCon in Amsterdam in 2018. It was a really big and impactful release with lots of updates to theme and navigation as usual, but also a new dashboard grid layout system. But version 5, I think, also marks a point where Grafana grew up a bit, with the additions to, like provisioning, teams and folders, and, pro and permissions. And in Grafana version 5, we also started a long journey of rewriting the whole front end from a deprecated version of Angular to React. This was a really hard and key decision to make because uh, we, we, we wanted to make Grafana be relevant for years to come and attract good developers. And <laughs> being stuck on a really old deprecated version of Angular was not going to make that happen. But we ha already had a really large plugin ecosystem for Angular plugins. So 
rewriting the whole Grafana's frontend and the plugin architecture while being backward compatible is something that I've likened to sort of replacing all the parts of a car while it's speeding down the road. But it's, so it's been really hard, but luckily we managed to pull it off and Grafana is now fully free of all, all Angular code. The only bits that remain are needed to kind of give community and customers time to update their plugins. The next milestone is version 6. This was also a really important release. It's when we added the Explore mode with its new logs viewer and support for Loki. Loki was just a new open source project that we had announced a couple of months prior, a distributed logging solution. And with the support for logging, Grafana took a big step into becoming a more complete observability solution. Next, we have Grafana version 7. This I remember as a pretty stressful release. It was during the height of the first COVID wave in 2020. We did not have a lot of time, and we had some pretty big, ambitious goals. So the goal for Grafana 7 was really around unifying our data model and our data visualization settings model to provide a more consistent user experience for setting display settings and overrides. We also added transformations in version 7, a way to transform data, something that many data sources lacked and something that many visualizations also need. And transformations kind of provided a single place where they could be shared by both. In version 7, we also added support for viewing and querying tracing data with built-in data sources for Jaeger and Sipkin. Grafana 7 really kind of moved Grafana in the direction of becoming more complete observability platform and also a more consistent data visualization platform, something that we really capitalized on in version 8, which I think is one of my favorite major releases in this last couple of years because it was so full of visual, easy-to-demo features with four new visualizations, a new alerting engine, built-in streaming capability, library panels, yeah, and, and so much more. It was really fun to show Grafana off to both community and customers. The following year, we released version 9, which also saw big updates to the new alerting engine. I think the new alerting engine kind of became much more mature and easy to use in version 9. We also added a new heat map panel and the already mentioned new Loki and Prometheus query builders. So that kind of brings us full circle to where we are today. And if I were to summarize a little bit my feelings of these last few years, it's obviously been a really incredible journey. Seeing Grafana dashboards pop up everywhere in the background of office photos, in data centers, in movies, in video games, and in the SpaceX control center. And realizing that Grafana is used by now over 20 million users just blows my mind. And it of course, makes me super proud to have been a part of this. It's also been uh, a real struggle, uh, lots of hard work from me and everyone at Grafana Labs and in the community, a struggle that in some ways never seemed to end because at least I, I see all the faults and warts in Grafana and everything that can be made better and easier to use. But seeing that untapped potential is what's kept me going all these years. And yeah, it's, it's like I've been working on this 10 years, but there's still so much more to do, so much that can be better. And speaking of 10, uh, it's been 10 years, but now let's talk about Grafana 10. And to do that, I want to welcome Mihaela Mayer and help to help me talk about Grafana 10. So uh, she's a director uh, of the front-end team who has been really instrumental in many of the developments you find in Grafana 10. So I want you to walk us through some of the highlights. Of course. Thank you, Turkel. So Grafana 10 is really the culmination of work that's been going on for longer than a year. Um, with many of these features having been delivered in preview earlier on, now maturing to become fully documented, supported, and turned on by default in Grafana 10. 
alongside all the exciting new features that we're going to be talking about today, um, this year we've been also investing in strengthening our continuous delivery practices. So what that means for all of us is new features and improvements being delivered to the open source project and Grafana Cloud as soon as they are ready from a development perspective. So I'd like to invite you all to turn on the feature flags that we have available and interact with us via the community forum. Without any delay, let's get into Grafana 10 and see what all the excitement is about. So as I mentioned earlier, an entire year's worth of work has gone into this, and that's very hard to summarize. So we've basically categorized it, and today, for this keynote, we're going to focus on four main themes. If you want to hear more about the rest, I'd like to invite you to join the other GrafanaCon sessions um, so you can hear all, the, all about it. Let's talk about how we improved Grafana to make it easier to start your journey with the product through getting started, to share your dashboards further than have ever gone before, uh, correlate your data, and also use Grafana as a platform for your apps. Getting started has been a key investment area for us in Grafana 10, with a focus on improving the experience for all of us, basically. Um, and to do this, what we've done is we've carried out user interviews, um, we've interacted with our community, we've done everything we can, basically, to gather feedback so we can collate a list of improvements that we should invest in. The majority of these have been aimed at simplifying the journey of a user, you know, from setting up the first data source to exploring their data and building beautiful dashboards. Through some key Grafana 10 features, uh, we've been able to seriously accelerate the journey of a Grafana user. So we've, been, we've seen tremendous improvements in the amount of time and effort it takes for um, a user to visualize their data, basically. As part of this initiative, uh, we've simplified our user flow and consistently reduce the amount of steps it takes from 14 to only five. That is just over a third of the steps you would have had to take previously. That also led to us having the time it takes, basically, for a user to set up and visualize their data from a data source. But how did we do this? Like I said before, there's a large selection of features that go into this um, theme, but ultimately what we focused on has been to overhaul and improve our search and navigation, simplify our UI at every single step so you can find, query, and query, find, configure, and query your data easily, and introduce a new approach to setting up a new dashboard. I know you're all, all on the edge of your seats going, just show me the features. So I'm going to pass on to Torkel um, to give us a brief demo. So Torkel, I know you love to live life on the edge with live demos. So uh, could you walk us through some of the Grafana 10 improvements and the new experience? Yeah, sure. Let's see if we get out. Gonna... Screen. So yeah, this is my favorite part of GrafanaCon, uh, showing Grafana off it in real time by using the product. So I'll mainly just cover some highlights to, to uh, updates we have done in, uh, in terms of navigation, search, getting started, building your first, first dashboard. Maybe we'll show some updates to visualizations, even though I'm, I'm not so supposed to, but it's live. No one, can, <laughs> no one can stop me. So the most striking thing if you log into Grafana 10 is seeing the new navigation compared to what Grafana looked like in version Nine. So we call it top nav because we moved most of the navigation to the top. The key thing here is really these breadcrumbs that are part of every page now, and you access the global navigation through this hamburger menu. And some pages have these what we call a section navigation that it makes it possible for you to move around different pages within a section. And the really key part here that I'm excited about with this new navigation is kind of consistency it brings. All pages look the same, all pages have a breadcrumb, and it's super easy to navigate around. Even with the section now collapsed, you can navigate around using the breadcrumb to find your way back. And the breadcrumb obviously makes it super easy to navigate dashboards as well, because you always have an easy way to go back to the folder, for example, where the dashboards are stored. The other part of the navigation, this top area, gives you access to your profile, a news drawer to keep up with Grafana news, and some quick actions to get you started building a new dashboard, for example. You also have the search palette here, or command palette, really, that allows you to search 
across all your dashboards, all your pages, and some actions even. So here I can type team, Teams and go back to the Teams page I was previously on. And if you're really mindful of utilizing all the space available and just viewing a dashboard in all, in all its glory, you can even collapse this top section to get a really slim view. And you can access the same command palette using Command K to, say, go to the Alert Rules page. There are other ways to navigate Grafana. Just to highlight this, you can type H to look at all the shortcuts that are mostly about aiding you in navigating around Grafana. Some new shortcuts here is GE to quickly jump to the Explore view from any page, or GH to go to your home dashboard. If you look at this mega menu again, you can see a new section here, Connections. So this section is all about aiding you in getting Grafana configured and getting you set up with your first data source. Uh, so in this list, it includes all the data sources in Graf that Grafana supports, not just built-in data sources. So no matter what you want to do with Grafana, you can find it here. And let's say you want to query some big query data. You can just search for that, get going, install it, one click, and then configure it. And once you're ready to build your first dashboard, just hit the quick, action, quick Actions menu. And this is the new kind of empty dashboard view that makes it pretty clear what your first action should be. I want to add my first visualization. And the first time you add a panel, you get to make a data source selection choice. So let's select Prometheus here. And I want to use a new feature called Kickstart Your Query that makes it a little easier to get started with common query patterns for Prometheus. I want to use a rate and sum query and look at some CPU data here. And I want to name this panel CPU. And I'm done. The next panel you add, you can use the new Add Panel menu, where you have access to options like visualization, row, or import a library panel. Then if you add a new visualization, you don't get this data source selection. It will just use automatically the the, the last data source you used. You can access this kind of bigger data source selection model using the advanced mode in the data source picker. And the, the thing that I want to highlight with this data source picker is that it exposes these kind of special data sources that, yeah, <laughs> or can be really useful. Uh, and they are kind of hiding really useful features. Like the mixed data source allows you to combine different data sources in a single panel and the dashboard data source, which allows you to reuse the query result from another panel and visualize it some other way, say, through a gauge or a staff. This is at least a pattern that I use a lot to visualize the same query result in two different ways. So that was a quick glimpse at some of the kind of changes we've done to the build your first dashboard kind of experience. I also want to highlight some updates we've done to visualizations and especially annotations. Uh, a long-standing feature request in Grafana has been to control which panels annotations show up in. So by default now, these annotations show up on all these graphs. And what you can do in Grafana 10 is actually control which panels the annotation events are visualized in. So by specifying this option show in, you can select selected panels or all except. I can select that and do unlabeled and hit apply, come back, hit refresh. And you can see that these annotation events are only visualized in the panel that I actually want them to be visualized in. And this annotation query is actually also showcasing a new feature in Grafana 10 that is available on the Grafana data source and that is a time region annotation query. This query is not really querying any data stored in a database. It's generating events based on time region configuration. And this is kind of replacing an old feature that existed in an old graph panel, uh, but then it was kind of done as a display setting. Here it's done as an annotation query, because we thought that, like, yeah, Re time regions should be data-driven. It should be controlled by data, not by a display setting. Another thing that I want to highlight before I wrap up the demo 
is updates we have done to the Canvas panel. So this is a panel we've been working on for a very long time, and it's now generally available without enabling a feature toggle. It's a really powerful panel that allows you to add elements, connections between elements, and then hook up metrics to these connections. And you can even add special graphics and hook up different animation states based on your data. So yeah, take a look at what you can do with the Canvas panel. It's a pretty powerful panel. We'll continue to make it even more powerful in the future. So with that, I'll wrap up this demo and hand it over to you, to uh, Michaela, to show more advanced features. Wasn't that impressive? And Temo, Torkel did such a good job of a live demo, even broke the rules, right? Did anyone expect that? Um, like I said, this is only a glimpse of what we have as part of you know, getting started. So I encourage you all to uh, go and have a look online to find out more. Now that getting started with Grafana is such a breeze, what else could we have for the community in store today? Well, our community and customers have been asking for better ways to share insights with others without having to log into Grafana. For this reason, we have developed public dashboards, which allow our customers to share their visualizations and their insights to a broader audience. As you can see, you can very easily create a public dashboard URL to share with the world. For those situations where security of information is a primary concern, we are also offering email sharing public dashboards. So let's say you are a, you're working as part of a team and you have some external partners that you're collaborating with. You don't want to give them full access to your system, right? You can, however, invite them via email and have very close control over how long they have access to these dashboards for to enable you to collaborate. Both these features are in preview and under feature flags. Observability on a large system used by many teams often leads to related data being stored in several data sources. Grafana's Big Ten philosophy is perfect for bringing in data from wherever it lives. And for Grafana 10, we wanted to make it even easier to cor correlate information from anywhere when using Grafana's Explore. With Grafana correlations, you can link between any two data sources. You'll need administrator level rights to be able to set up a new correlation between a source data source and a target based on some specific parameters. Once you've had that set up, anyone with access to this instance will be able to see the correlated links. So as a result, when you go to the Explore page, the source data source will show some links um, in the Explore view in the visualization. Once you click on it, it will open up split view and it will pre-populate the target data source. This feature is perfect for those advanced users with numerous data sources, um, enabling them to streamline their data discovery and troubleshooting journey. Correlations can be set up via provisioning and also the Grafana UI. This feature is currently in public preview and under a feature flag. Torkel mentioned earlier about how Grafana, look, is not just about visualizations and dashboards. We are a platform to have your apps on. So this is something we've been investing in for Grafana 10 um, as well, to make some big improvements to the platform aspect of Grafana. We are making it possible for plugins to integrate with core workflows, such as the panel menu, and also to define links between plugins themselves. These new extension points uh, will enable a much more integrated and seamless experience. App plugins become that much more powerful with the ability to extend the Grafana UI, unlocking new workflows and bringing previously segmented capabilities into one unified experience. With UI extensions, apps can add commands and links to dashboard panels and enable a user to act on what they're observing. For example, to raise an incident directly from your alert view. We're just starting on this journey and uh, we are very excited about the workflows it unlocks. We also want to present to you the Grafana plugins tools, which replace the deprecated Grafana toolkit and provide a faster and much more flexible way for developers to create and update plugins. There's no need for you to learn how and configure all the build tools for a Grafana plugin. 
the new instant plugin development environment helps you focus on coding, and you can easily distribute your plugin today using GitHub workflows. Spend time where it really matters, designing and developing a Grafana plugin. There's much more to Grafana 10 than what you've seen so far. There are so many features you can experiment with, so head over to the Grafana 10 What's New page to see a full list of what's available. We know you're as uh, excited as us, you know, to get your hands on the latest Grafana version, and would like to invite you to also join the deep dive into Grafana 10 session, which will happen virtually on June 14th, to hear more and kickstart your Grafana 10 journey. Now, I was telling you earlier about continuous delivery. So as you can imagine, my colleagues here in the room, but also those back home, are already working on the next greatest feature that we're going to present to you. So with that in mind, I'm going to pass on to Torkel to talk to us more about that. So usually during these GrafanaCon keynotes, I get a chance to talk a little bit about what I'm excited about for the coming year and beyond. And there are a lot of things that I'm excited about that will have a big impact on Grafana's future. So I'm really excited about seeing more opinionated solution apps that brings together metrics, logs, and traces into a more dynamic and easy to use experience. And we are continuing work on the platform to make these apps feel more native and feel more interconnected. And that is something that sort of will be, will be continued, uh, be a strong focus for, our, uh, for us the coming year to enable apps to do more and for the platform to provide more things for app developers. I'm also really excited about innovations in the core dashboarding capabilities. And of course, excited to explore the recent progress and leverage the recent progress in AI. AI presents lots of exciting opportunities for Grafana. And we have many teams working on this already, exploring ways to make writing queries easier uh, or summarizing incidents and more. The key thing here is that we'll do this the Grafana way in the open through our open source projects and through engaging the open source community. So during last year's GrafanaCon keynote, I did mention that one thing that I was really excited about for the coming year was working on dynamic dashboards. And those were not just empty words. Reworking and rethinking how dashboards work has been my key focus this last year. Sadly, it's taking a bit longer than I hoped, but we do actually have something to show for it. And it's actually part of Grafana 10. We call it Scenes. It's the next generation dashboard architecture designed from the ground up to do all of the dynamic things that we've been wanting to do for years in dashboards. Things like conditional panels, flexible and responsible layouts, data-driven layouts, nesting and composition, template variables and time ranges on different levels of a, of a dashboard, support for different forms of drill down, and be much faster, of course. But more importantly, this new framework and this new architecture is designed to be used as an extensible library from application plugins to build really dynamic and engaging data applications with. And that is the part that is actually shipping Grafana 10. So the core dashboarding solution in Grafana 10 is not powered by scenes yet, but you can build application plugins that are. And I want to give you a sense of what you can build with this new framework. So let's do another live demo and see how this can look, what, what this could look like. So what you'll see here is not a kind of real application that is really useful. It's only designed really to showcase what you can do with this, this scenes framework. And at its core, Scenes enable you to embed dashboards into your applications that include things like template variables, time ranges, refresh picker, a layout of visualizations, but it's so much more than that. 
because what you can do with this dashboard is add all sorts of new behaviors, new components. For example, in this view, I've chosen to add a toggle that completely changes the, the structure and layout of the, of the dashboard. And I've decided to make this dashboard completely data-driven in the sense that this is completely powered by a single query and a single query result that includes many time series. But the data coming from that query is generating the layout. And this is something I've been dreaming about doing in Grafana for many, many years, having the actual query results be able to define the layout. And you can imagine how easy it would be then to add all sorts of conditions, so to filter out data that might not be interesting, you don't need to include it in the dashboard. Adding a search that filters down what panels are displayed is super easy. And the response and the kind of flexible layouts here adjust the screen size to what is actually needed. And you can add all sorts of actions to panels, like this drill down action here. And let's go into a drill down view. This is also a key part of the scene framework, enabling you to uh, create multiple levels of drill downs and hierarchy. And through the new breadcrumbs, you will be able to quickly find your way back to where you came from. And another key thing that differentiates these scenes views from normal dashboards is that state is preserved. So if you were to change the time, time range here and go back to the previous view, that time range is preserved. And in fact, data is also preserved. So if you go into a view that you already visited, with the same time range, no new queries are being issued. And this enables a really fast experience of navigating around these different views. There are more ways you can make drill down work in the new scenes framework. You can also manipulate the layout of the current dashboard you're looking at. So by clicking on these different HTTP handlers, I can add a new panel, a drill down panel to the same view. This has been something I've seen countless people trying to accomplish in normal dashboards, but been unable to get this to work cleanly. And of course, you can add actions here to any panel that would change the display setting or change how it's visualized. You can do anything. You can add all sorts of new custom components and behaviors. It's designed to be very extensible and mostly declarative. So all the actual coding is only to add those new behaviors. Anyway, I'm super excited to see what we at Grafana Labs are, are going to build with this and what the community and customers are going to build with this. So I'll jump back to slides and wrap up. So if you want to know more about the scenes framework, you have to check out the session tomorrow that will dive into it in more greater detail. And if you want to know more right now, check out the GitHub project. There you'll find links to documentation and examples that will get you started. And now I want to welcome our CEO, Raj Dutt, to wrap up the keynote. Thanks, Torkel, and uh, great job to you and Mihaela for giving us an overview on Grafana 10. I know everyone here is excited. I certainly am. So hello again. Hopefully you've gotten a good sense of some of the new features in Grafana 10 um, and some of the wide variety of use cases that our open source software is used for. So this has kind of become tradition at GrafanaCon, and this year it's no different. But it's always exciting and interesting for us to look back over the last year and kind of see what the community has accomplished out in the wild. Right? We're constantly inspired, surprised, sometimes confused, sometimes amused, oftentimes impressed um, at what the community gets up to. Right? And that's the magic of open source. You, you get to see a thousand fl flowers bloom, and we take a lot of inspiration from that. So let's go back and look at six or seven dashboards that caught our eye over the last year. And I'd love to use it as a way to kind of give everyone here a sense of all the different use cases that Grafana is used for. So here's the first one, 
And as you know, there's many fans at Grafana Labs of rockets and aviation. In fact, we're kind of enamored that uh, various uh, rocket companies, both public and private, are using Grafana to help with their launches. But this is a dashboard that Philip Doe, who's a university student, software engineer, and general space enthusiast uh, from Southern California um, at the University of California, Los Angeles, created. And this shows um, a lot of interesting telemetry data from the rocket that actually won uh, the world record for the highest rocket altitude for a liquid rocket um, at the collegiate level. And so they won the dollar per foot challenge, which literally pays this team a dollar for every foot that the rocket goes up. So quite an interesting challenge. And this rocket uh, focuses on liquid propellants, which is pretty interesting. Um, greater control, but much more complicated than solid propellants. And so Grafana is an essential tool for this team. And you can see this dashboard is monitoring things like pressure, um, altitude, um, you know, from sensors like pressure transdu transducers, thermocouples. You know, this is way outside the normal use case of uh, monitoring data centers and server servers, right? And a lot of us think this kind of stuff is really cool and really interesting. So the good news is, is that the team had a successful launch. That's the launch of the rocket there on the left. And they managed to recover the rocket after. And I love the fact that among some large companies like 3M and Siemens, uh, Grafana's up there as uh, one of the key collaborators on the launch. So we found that kind of cool. So congrats to uh, Philip Doe and the team there for their uh, accomplishment. We were enamored by that. So now from all the way up in the sky to all the way down uh, at the ocean level, this is another interesting example. So I don't know how many people here have heard of the ocean race. I hadn't until we saw this dashboard. But the ocean race is a around-the-world sailing competition. And it's described as, by many people as the longest and toughest professional sporting event in the world. Uh, this race normally lasts tens of thousands of miles. In previous years, it's, la it's uh, been up to 50,000 miles. And you can imagine uh, just the endurance and the intensity of these sailing teams having to sail 24-7 for months and months on end competing. So this dashboard that you see here is for one of the boats in the competition, the Malizia. Um, and it monitored things like its GPS location, uh, wind speed, boat speed, um, air and water temperatures. Um, can't see the whole dashboard here. I wish I could scroll it. Um, but, you know, and renewable en energy uh, generation through the boat solar panels. And so we thought this was super interesting. And it was really, key, uh, really cool to see this team using Grafana to help them track their progress during the race. So here's another one, a little, uh, little bit more up our wheelhouse of the normal core observability use case. So this is from a team at IBM. And this was presented at SustainabilityCon. And they basically optimized and focused on sustainability at the data center level. And they basically consolidated their workloads to achieve a 75% reduction in power um, while improving application performance at the same time. They migrated to a cloud-native workload, moving away from uh, x86 to IBM Linux 1, kind of figures, because it is IBM. I'm not too sure that there's a lot of other people um, using that. Um, but uh, we have our own session uh, uh, later in GrafanaCon about how a company is using Grafana to optimize its energy consumption. So if you're interested in that, definitely check it out. And here's another example from Hanna Hemzing, who's designed an air sensor uh, along with a Grafana dashboard that is available on GitHub. You can check it out and you know, potentially run this sort of thing at your, uh, inside your home. Um, this kind of solution actually provides much better insight performance than a lot of commercial solutions out there. And uh, it's kind of fun to set up. So it's using Prometheus. It's using a ESP32 uh, device, which is kind of an open sensor that you can buy pretty cheaply. And uh, you know, monitoring things like air quality, carbon dioxide levels, humidity, temperature. And uh, it's pretty cool, pretty easy to set up. So we've talked about space. We've talked about data centers. We've talked about oceans. Let's go back onto the land and talk about a topic that I know is top of mind for all of us, moss. Just kidding. But mosses are tough plants. They survive in drought, har harsh conditions. But this project from Green City Solutions is pretty interesting because they run this moss farm. And what they're doing is they're trying to figure out which type of moss filter air the best. And they're making tremendous progress in this area. Um, and so the basic idea is mosses can cool the surrounding air 
by evaporating water on, on their overall surface. And mosses actually are incredibly efficient because they can metabolize this fine dust. So I learned a lot about mosses when looking at this dashboard. And I'm sure you're very interested to learn more about mosses too. But in all seriousness, this dashboard monitors things like, again, temperature, humidity, visual, uh, visualizes ventilation, irrigation settings. And all this data is stored in InfluxDB, which is a database that's particularly suited for these kind of use cases. And the second dashboard that you see below here shows the amount of filtered air and how that translates into breathing volume for humans. And so the cool thing is, is these dashboards are actually shared. And I'm wondering if Green City Solutions is going to use the new public dashboard feature in Grafana 10. But they're shared with their end customers. And their end customers include the city of London, uh, the city of Lisbon, as well as companies like Deutsche Telekom. So it's kind of interesting to see how um, you know, these uh, mosses um, are really important and uh, you know, actually having such an impact. All right, so here's one more. Uh, and this one is for, from the Zackenberg Research Center in Greenland. So basically, it's an Arctic research center. And uh, people uh, at this uh, basic, basically scientific outpost are using Grafana to kind of uh, monitor the Arctic climate change. So you can see this dashboard, um, you know, a lot of data, um, things like uh, seawater temperature, um, salinity. And you can see that they're using one of the visualization plugins that uh, Torkel mentioned has been such a big part of the general Grafana ecosystem. So this is actually the Plotly uh, visualization plugin that's available on the catalog. And um, you know, I think it's really interesting because alerts are actually set up to notify the team of scientists uh, when there's a change in uh, status or a you know, rapid change in the environment that they're monitoring. So pretty interesting stuff. And again, a pretty unique use case. All right, and this is the last one that we were, and potentially one of the most fun ones. This isn't a live dashboard, to be clear. This isn't a real, real world scene. This is a scene from a game. Many of you have heard of this game, uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. But Grafana has officially entered popular culture. Now, it's pretty obvious to those of you that know Grafana that that looks a hell of a lot like Grafana based on the style of the gauges, the kind of color scheme, you know, like everything about it is clearly Grafana. But this is from a game, and this is a scene inside Call of Duty Modern uh, Warfare. So whoever it was at Activision that was a Grafana fan that was responsible for this, whoever you are, thank you. Big hat tip from all of us. <laughs> all right, that brings us to the next, and, uh, the next section here which is all about our Golden Grot Awards. Now, Torkel mentioned our new cute mascot, Grot, originally a GitHub bot. Grot is also uh, the ceremonial master of the Golden Grot Awards. And so we announced these awards back in February. Um, and we weren't sure what kind of response we'd see from the community. Um, and as usual, we were blown away. Uh, we received, I think it was like upwards of 70 or 80 different submissions that were all worthy of consideration, made our internal judges' lives very, very complicated and much more difficult than we thought. Um, but we helped uh, cull down the applications into a top, top five finalist. And so I'd love to share the top finalists with you and then unveil the, the winners on behalf of Grot. So here we go. So first, congratulations to our second and third place winners on both the personal uh, as well as the professional dashboards. So the, for, the per, for the personal dashboards, we have Juan Carlos and a tie in third with Philip Doe and Brian Wallace. And for the professional dashboards, we have Christopher Field and Jassy Singh. So congratulations to all five of you for your uh, achievements. Really good. But now it's my pleasure to announce and invite on the stage the uh, two winners of our Golden Grot Awards, the first place winners of our first ever Golden Grot Awards. I hope this also becomes a tradition at GrafanaCon. We'll see our first time this year. Um, so as our first winner for the personal dashboard, congratulations to Nikki Sonomans. <laughs> Nikki, join me on stage. So Nikki, you've really captured uh, the spirit of this competition with your dashboard. Uh, why don't we stand here so they can see it? No worries. <laughs> so you know, it's taking complex sets of data, transforming them into beautiful visualizations, 
And obviously, many people in Europe are currently concerned with both clean and traditional energy generation, especially with recent events over the last uh, little while, right? And so it's really great to see a colorful Grafana dashboard that really effectively presents a significant amount of energy infrastructure data from open data. So really good job, Nikki, to utilize obviously the latest GeoMap panel in something that's really easy to understand. And I absolutely love this dashboard. Keep going back to it to learn more about uh, kind of this geopolitical energy intersection of data. So congratulations is our winner. So yep, let's take a picture for, uh, for the photographer in front of your dashboard. <laughs> Congrats. There you go. Thank you so much. No worries. All right. So that was our personal dashboard winner. Congrats again, Nikki. And for our professional dashboard, the winner for the Golden Grot Award, I'd like to congratulate Raymond Soden. Thanks. Hey, Raymond. Congratulations. All right, so there were so many great entries in this category, and I think what made Raymond's dashboard stand out was really the completeness of this system. I mean, you've packed an incredible amount of information into what is a clearly a very information-dense dashboard, um, you know, really interesting layout using the gauge panel, using all sorts of different visualizations. I think this is really a cool example of what, uh, what Grafana can do. And, uh, you know, it's... Uh, Kind of uh, in addition to the infrastructure and application data, also got some Zendesk stuff, the Ops Genie stuff. So really good job. Love your t-shirt too, by the way. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. All right. All right. So congrats again to our first annual Golden Grot prize winners. Really proud of all the amazing things that the community is doing with Grafana. We're constantly inspired every year. And uh, you know, I hope that this session was useful to get a sense of not only what is coming uh, in the future of Grafana, what we've delivered today with Grafana 10. Um, and you know, clearly, we're doing a lot of work in open source. It's at the heart of what we do. It's in our DNA. But I'd love to end this keynote by telling you about two really interesting developments around Grafana Cloud. So for those of you that don't know, Grafana Cloud is the easiest way to get started with our stack, right? Of course, you can always, always download our software um, yourself. You're welcome to run it. The majority of our users do, and that's always going to be the case. right? But it can be hard to set up this whole stack from scratch. And Grafana Cloud really provides this turnkey way to get going in you know, less than a minute, potentially. It's a fully managed platform that brings together the best of Loki, Grafana, Tempo, uh, Mimir, while still remaining true to our big tent philosophy and allowing you to bring together data using other data sources. So there's two things I'd like to tell you that are relatively interesting about Grafana Cloud, including a new announcement that we'd like to make today. So the first is a little bit of an apology that I'd like to offer every observability customer uh, in the industry. I think that observability vendors, including Grafana Labs potentially, have done a pretty crappy job of aligning the value that you get from the data that you send to your systems with the cost of the data, right? The volumes of data are growing exponentially, but I don't think the value that you're getting from the data has also grown exponentially. So there's been this disconnect over the last few years. And I think that that disconnect is particularly problematic in the current kind of economical, economic uh, conditions, right? Where we really care about making sure that we're getting the right value, um, you know, budgets are being constrained, et cetera, et cetera. So the feature I'd love to talk to you about today for a minute is adaptive metrics. And so adaptive metrics at its heart analyzes the metrics data that you send Grafana Cloud, and it automatically reduces the fidelity of this data based on how you're querying the data, based on how you're visualizing the data. So it continuously does this analysis, and it can cut your usage, depends on your profile, but anywhere from 20% to upwards of 80%. And so it allows you to align the value that you get from Grafana Cloud with what you pay for it, with what you're paying for Grafana Cloud. And we think this is really an important step to kind of become more of a partner rather than a vendor, which is very important to us at Grafana Labs. And so speaking of Grafana Cloud, the other announcement that we're making is that we are including 
all enterprise plugins that were previously only available to our enterprise customers, and we're making all those plugins available in our free Grafana Cloud plan. So if you sign up for free, you can now get access to plugins such as Splunk, Snowflake, Datadog, every single plugin that we make, and it's available to you to get started with. And this is really part of our goal to really make Grafana Cloud the best way to both run our software, but also a great way to understand our full capabilities and understand and experience everything that Grafana Labs has to offer. So it's a fully managed, cost-effective platform, and everything that we do in terms of enterprise plugins is now available on the free Grafana Cloud plan. So that brings us to the end of our keynote. I want to reiterate uh, a big thank you to the community. Um, who here in this room has uh, contributed in some way to the open source Grafana project? Raise your hand. Wow. I think that's uh, probably over 50% of the room. And that was what we were hoping for this year at GrafanaCon, to really you know, appreciate um, the community and the people that got us here over the last 10 years.